hey it's Emily and today I'm going to be doing a video I wasn't actually sure that I would do. So I'm going to be doing, as you can tell from the title, some five star predictions. So I want to do two separate five star prediction videos. I want to do one for books I already have and think will be five stars, whether I have them physically, ebook, audiobook, whatever. I have them in some format or another and I think they are going to be really really great reads for me. Now one of the reasons I've hesitated saying I want to do a five star prediction video is because I don't actually star rate my books and so I wasn't sure how that would work if I don't star rate my books and I'm doing a five star prediction videos but what I resolved to do is just come back and see if the books were great reads for me, but there were some things that would have held back from just that feeling of absolute adoration and love of the book, which is, I, I think for a fair number of people, how they give five stars versus four stars is just kind of a gut feeling that they have. And I still have that gut feeling about books, uh, even if I don't choose to associate that with a particular number or star rating that I give a book. And I can do an entirely separate video about why I don't star rate books personally. Um, but that's an aside for potentially another video if people are interested. But I can still come back later and see whether or not I had that gut feeling that I associate with potentially giving a book five stars. So I figured it would still be a video that I could do um, even if it's slightly differently. And I'll still call it a five star predictions video just so that you kind of know what to expect from this video. So this is the first one I've done. In the next one, I can come back and see whether or not these were really great reads for me and then give some new predictions. But this is the first one that I'm actually doing. So I'm just gonna talk about five or six books that I think are gonna be really great reads for me that I already have. So this is gonna be the backlist edition and I'll do another video later about some five-star predictions for new releases, 2021 releases that I think will also be great reads for me. Anyway, so the first one I want to talk about is The Humans by Matt Haig. So I have read one Matt Haig book before and that was The Midnight Library and I really enjoyed it. And I think based on what I've heard about this book, um, it uses some tropes that I really, really like. So I think this one follows, uh, you know, someone from another planet who needs to come to Earth and needs to kind of fake it as a human to achieve, I don't remember exactly what they're trying to achieve or what their goal is and what they need to accomplish um, by faking it as a human for a while, but I, I tend to love books that use sci-fi as commentary on humanity and I, I have heard this book is funny and I also really appreciate it when sci-fi can use humor to comment on humanity, just something I tend to really enjoy. So I think this one will really resonate with me. I, I did enjoy Matt Haig's writing in the Midnight Library, so I really feel like I can get into his writing style. Um, hopefully I can get into his humor, and it just sounds like something that I'm really going to love. The next book I want to talk about is Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. Again, this is an author that I've read before. I've read all of the Grace Lee Realm series by this author, and absolutely a adored them. And so I'm hoping that I can get into this book as well, just in part because of how much I have loved the other books by this author. So I know I love her writing style, I know what she can do, and I'm hoping that this also translates into this book as well. I believe this is a standalone, if I'm not mistaken, and this one follows Jane, and her aunt, I believe who was raised her, has recently passed away, so she's kind of a little bit directionless feeling like she needs to figure some things out about her future and what she you know the rest of her life and what that's going to look like for her and she's invited to a gala at some fancy place i think and her aunt had promised her before or made jane promise before she died that if she was ever invited to this gala or to this place that she would go and so she goes to this gala and i believe is presented with some different options about what her future could look like. That's all I, I know and the premise sounds interesting. So I just, I tend to love books about characters who need to grow and change as their life changes and make some decisions about where they want their life to go. I That tends to be a fun thing that I like discussed in a book and I just usually find that pretty interesting. I tend to like going to settings 
like the one that's described when I was reading the synopsis. I don't know if it, it kind of maybe had a gothic feel, I'm not sure, but I tend to like characters going to these kinds of places and just interesting stuff that can happen at them. So, but again, mostly I just have adored the Graceline Realm series and I'm hoping that Kristen Kishore's other book can be a five star for me or a huge success for me as a reader. <laughs> so the next one that I want to talk about, I've tried to avoid in this list putting next books in series that I know I've already loved the first or second or whatever book in that series. I've tried to avoid that because I'm hoping that if I've loved the first installments in a series, of course, I'm hoping that the rest of the series will be awesome for me. But I've made kind of an exception for this one. So I'm going to go with the Live Ship Trader series by Robin Hobb. So technically this is a series that I have not read. I have read a series from this author that is set in this world, although I believe this series is a very distinct series from the first series in the Elderlyne Realm of the Elderling series, and you follow a completely different set of characters from the first series. And then I believe the third series is where more of those two kind of start to come together. So it is a very different series with very different characters and a very different premise. But I do know that I love Robin Hobbs and her writing style and the world that she has built here. So, you know, it's not necessarily the next book in a series that I know I already love, but I have some reason to suspect that I will really, really love this series. One, because again, Red Robin Hobb, I love her writing, I love this world. Two, I tend to love pirate ship stories I've come to find. And this one follows, essentially it's kind of, so the first series follows what's going on on land. This one follows kind of what's going on on sea, on the sea in this world. And it follows ships where they can become these live ships if three generations of a family have died on their decks. And so you follow a family where the third generation is about to die and is about to be passed on to the fourth generation and it's about to become a live ship and there's a whole bunch of stuff that is going on with that. Anyway, I don't know too much else about the premise aside from that and that's all I really need to know to know that I'm probably really going to love this series. So that's the next one on this list. The next book I'm going to talk about is the Pages & Co Book Wanderers series by Anna James. I adore middle grade and I adore books about books <laughs> and so I think those two elements are going to combine in this series to just have it be a magical fun time for me that will just give me a warm fuzzy feeling and I believe this series follows a girl whose maybe grandmother runs a bookstore or something and she finds that she can go into these books and meet these characters I believe or at least spend time with characters from the books that she's reading in some capacity or another and has adventures from there. Sounds delightful, sounds like everything that I want in a middle grade. So I really, really think this is going to be a very special series for me. So that's the next one. The next book is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong and I haven't heard or I guess I've heard a lot about this book. I, the premise as people talk about it, there are only so many elements of the premise that people typically talk about and they just say, just read it, this is so good. <laughs> and I believe it follows a mother and her son and it's a political high fantasy. I tend to love political high fantasies. I love diving into rich worlds and having uh, just political things happen, following some leaders, following some people who the leader's decisions affect and kind of just following everyday people in these world but also how those decisions that affect them are being made and just the political machinations that can happen between different groups. I tend to really love that and I've heard that that is part of this story and I have just heard so many people say I just loved it, read it, this is excellent, just read it if you love political high fantasies. So I'm gonna trust people and say that this could be a really, really great book for me. <laughs> the last book on this list that I'm going to talk about is Ancillary Justice by Anne Lucky, or this entire series, really. I've heard that this is basically the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers, but more political. 
which I am down for. I absolutely love the Wayfarer series and I love sci-fi that even soft sci-fi, I guess, is kind of what I've heard some people refer to it as, that just uses sci-fi to talk about humanity. Again, something I talked about with the humans. Um, but I've heard that this also just integrates a little bit more politics than Becky Chambers does. And I, again, as I just mentioned with The Sword of Kaigen, love political machinations, however that happens, whether it's in a fantasy world or in a sci-fi world. So I think this could be a really great series for me and I've heard so many great things about it. So that's it for, you know, six, I guess that was, books or series that I really think will resonate with me that I already have on my TBR and already have a copy of. And I'll do another one, as I said, for 2021 releases and that'll hopefully help me to get to some of these that I'm super excited about, both new releases and ones that I already have. And I will come back once I've read all of these and give a, a check on whether or not I actually liked them. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more bookish content and to see how I end up feeling about these books. And I will leave my Twitter and Instagram link down below. That's where I like to hang out. I will also leave more information for how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.